wrong you're here with the same gals new topic you know <laughs> <laughs> I still feel Great. like I want to say all right but we'll cut it out I don't care I know I feel tense without it just say it it's okay <laughs> all right and here all right we are. we're uh, back <laughs> there uh, it is yeah <laughs> uh, settle in okay everything is right in the world yeah Woo. all right uh, but it is, it feels good. Um, but yeah, welcome back to another episode. Ah, it is a Friday for us. We're recording on a unusual day for us. It's, yeah. you know, Friday is like the end of the week. Um, in case you didn't know. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a breath of fresh air, even though, you know, we might still work on the weekend or whatever, you know, you might have other mm -hmm. obligations. It just still something about that Friday night feel, you know, it still feels like an exhale, even if you have to get up early tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to work today and I do have to wake up early tomorrow. Mm. So, For work also? I was thinking about it. I might work in the morning, but I have to wake up for a nail appointment. Oh, okay. a good reason at least. Yeah. Right. So. They'll probably look better than mine. Look, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered uh, a home, a home nail kit, which, okay. I am proud of myself for doing it because I do, I like the craft of it. Like I'm going to start trying to like really incorporate some of the skills that I've seen online and stuff like that. Um, but I actually do enjoy doing it. I just, um, like you said, like you mentioned in one of our past episodes, I just do it at the inopportune time. <laughs> and I don't know why it's always like, I have like 45 minutes and I'm like, Ryan, this is going to take like two hours. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? You know, it's like yeah. self-inflicted. I don't, I don't know. I don't claim to know why I do this. It's, I, it's like a Sunday afternoon activity, right? You got to give yourself time. Yeah. And I have a Sunday coming up. A good Sunday. Yeah, because it. we've established it's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> ah, exactly. So self-inflicted. So um, I would say enjoy your nail appointment, sit back, relax. And Thank you. I won't be because I'm getting a pedicure as well, mm. which I need, but I dread because my, my, my teeth, nope, my feet, <laughs> my feet are really ticklish and I hate when they use like the pumice stone. I know. It's really anxiety ridden for me. <laughs> no, it's, it is. When you're younger, it's funny, you know, and they laugh with you because you're young and naive. And now they're just like, bitch, you're 30. Like, can you sit right. back? <laughs> they're like annoyed with you. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, your feet are still going to be really, you know, not very smooth because you won't let me do my job. So <laughs> I know it's a whole thing. It is a whole it's thing. I tried this. The last time I got, um, like I got a pedicure, I try to just tell myself like, this doesn't actually tickle. And again, I don't know if it's actually effective or if my feet are becoming less ticklish as I get older, mm -hmm. but I have actually like consciously, like I tell myself, I almost like whisper it to myself. I'm like, this doesn't tickle. Like, this is actually not that bad. So try it tomorrow and see if it's effective for you. Okay. I'll try, but it's, it's not like a funny tickle. It's like a painful, like yeah. just tense, uncomfortable, it's not fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, tickling's not fun ever, no. you no, know, it's, it's funny for a second and then it's like, stop, 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 <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it becomes a fight real quick. So checking in for this week, how are you doing Morgan? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm just kind of tired. Um, it's, been an interesting week. I had to explain to my mom what OnlyFans was. <laughs> um, so that was a fun conversation. Yes. And I also had to give her a rundown of all the Kardashians, which I did not realize how much I knew about them. But I don't know. We were talking about their kids, who's with who. Kim and Kanye are, you know, always doing whatever Kim and Kanye do. So that was like, that came on TV. And so she was like, why did they break up? And so it was just like, oh, okay. Well, back in 2007. See. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Kardashian was born on, you know, a snowy, no, she's born in California, I think. Um, but <laughs> snowy 
winter's eve i don't know when her birthday is no i just gave her like a rundown but i was like this these conversations are hilarious the only fans was funnier that's for sure yeah she's like oh people okay oh like yeah i know look at her browser history later um yeah. <laughs> right i'm like oh yeah she's gonna get a virus on her computer my dad's gonna be like what did you what were you looking at <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. When I was editing one of our videos, I told you this, or I showed you, there was like, um, a picture because, um, we had like shared screen. Mm -hmm. And so that picture like covered part of the video strip, like on iMovie. And I was like, is this a virus? Like I, like (laughs) my mind immediately went to like LimeWire. Like I downloaded this video and so did like, you know, some super Mario brothers, like right. Nothing. It was so random, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, good. Well, I'm glad you had some open and honest conversation and dialogue with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cleaning only fans. She was like surprised. I was like, yeah, I'm cool. Like do what you got to do to make a buck. I'm not about anything. I appreciate okay. everyone just trying to hustle out there. She's like, Oh, I thought I wouldn't have. Ex-. And I was like, I think my mom thinks I'm a prude. I don't think she listens to the podcast. So that's the thing. Right. <laughs> that's the next conversation we're going to have. I know. <laughs> Mom, points of support. <laughs> oh my God. That's Point so funny. Support. I do think that, I think that the majority of people that at least somewhat know us, I would say, would be su- a little bit surprised at how open and honest we really are on this podcast. Um, I think it takes people by surprise because I don't think that, people think it's possible to be this open and honest. You know what I mean? Like we see, we see people like in, you know, movies or celebrities, right? People with these big platforms that share really intimate details of their lives, right? Yeah. But in reality, not, it, it's just a certain type of person, right? Like you're, you're just like a certain type of person that wants to have those conversations without, you know, necessarily like filtering what may or may not go over with, you know, popular culture or, you know, status quo. So. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So look at mm. me. Brave New World. Yeah. <laughs> Told my mom about OnlyFans. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> next on the docket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what about you? How's it going? Um, it's been good. I have had a pretty solid week. Um yeah, actually like thinking back, I feel very content. I, I don't really have anything necessarily new to report, but I can say that my schedule now, I really do enjoy like having my time. I'm trying to like really lean into it. Um, I haven't been journaling as much. Um, and I do want to get back to that because it does really help me just get out some shit. Even if, even if I don't know what that is that I wanted to get out or, you know, whatever it is, it really has helped a lot with my anxiety, which is good. Mm. And honestly, just taking time for myself and realizing like, I'm entitled to this. There's a reason why I did what I did. And it was a scary decision, but I did it so that I could actually lessen my anxiety and lessen my load. So I'm right. trying to remind myself of that all the time. Yep. Um, my wedding planner is coming in handy. Thanks to Morgan. Ooh. I know. See, she loves a planner, guys. Like... She can't, cannot stress this enough. I, she loves I, a good planner. Uh, something about that pen and paper, just writing it down. I know Ben was like, you need to update your Google calendar. And I was like, I mean, I have my planner right here. Like, like literally <laughs> he'll text me and be like, oh, what are we doing like Wednesday night? And I'm like, go check my planner. Like, go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you have a better idea of what's going on on my Wednesday night if you check my planner. Uh, <laughs> so So, which brings us to our episode this week, which is sexual do's and don'ts. And oh yeah, this one was a fun topic that kind of came out of the blue Mm. because last week's episode was so fun. We had Eli on and we had such a good conversation. And by the end, we were talking about some do's and don'ts and Ryan and I were just like, you know what? This might be a good kind of little tie-in. Yeah. Let's, let's see. Right. What should we do? What shouldn't we do? This is body hair all over. This is like (laughs) research in action. I'll get my planner out. I'll get my note section open. Everyone get your (laughs) sexual journals out. Like Ryan Mm. brought up episodes ago. Ooh, wait a minute. 
I really like the idea of a sexual journal. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Remember we said we could share, we'll share your sexual jur- journal on um, Patreon. We did Ooh, something to look forward to because there you go. I love a good journal. So she loves a journal. <laughs> she loves sex. <laughs> I do, Uh, which is why I was so excited to get into some of this research. Um, I really like it too, because it's really interesting. Sexual do's and don'ts, obviously there's so many more than we'll probably even be able to mention tonight. Um, But I really like it because depending on what you're looking for in sexual do's and don'ts, like literal sexual activity do's and don'ts versus Mm -hmm. mental sexual do's and don'ts, right? Like things to prepare I had really a lot of fun just like looking through some of the information that's out there. Also, what I really liked is that most of the research that I found was pretty recent. Um, Mm -hmm. So you can probably attest to this, Morgan, like as we're doing research, we're really just at the, you know, we're really just at the, what do you say? Yes, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, at the what's that? We're really at the mercy of whatever is you know available through Google search. You know, within the first few pa- pages, right? There's so much out there, but what actually is relevant to what you're you know typing in? It's really only about one to two pages deep. And so, a lot of the research that I was finding for some of the other episodes was kind of old, you know, from like early thousands, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I was really happy to see there were a lot of more current sexual do's and don'ts, which I really think just you can accredit to one thing about the pandemic. People had time to read and people had time to write. (laughs) So we got a lot of good articles. And (laughs) and people had time to fuck. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) So just going to jump into some fun stuff about this. Um, So the first thing that I kind of wanted to do with my research, I was like, okay, well, before I even get into a bunch of articles, you know, what are sexual do's and don'ts, right? Like, what do we define as sexual do's and don'ts and why are those important? Or like, why are those interesting enough to talk about for an hour plus, right? <laughs> and so um, so some of the reasons that I wrote down and I'll have Morgan, you know, you can comment on whatever you'd like. Um, but one of the first ones that I thought of to myself was, you know, se- sexual do's and don'ts for me is like kind of having like a mental checklist for yourself. Um, So, you know, whether or not, you know, you're romantically dating this person or you just met, right. Or you met on an app, wherever, if you're going to venture into, you know, the sexual realm, you know, do sexual acts with someone or, you know, more than one, if you listen to our last episode, (laughs) (laughs) um, I think it more falls into the realm of like mental checklist, right? Because it's not like, I mean, you could, but it's not like you're going to have like a pen and pad, right? (laughs) You're not going to be like, okay, before we engage in this, let me just get out my handy dandy notebook. (laughs) And Okay. So when you say mental checklist, are you saying like things you will and won't do depending on the type of relationship you have with this person? No, we were talking about, and to my understanding, we were talking about sexual do's and don'ts, like sexual do's and don'ts of when you actually come together to have sexual intercourse right that's what I mean like wait okay we might need to rewind yeah so (laughs) okay say it's a one night stand versus someone you've been in a relationship with for a year Mm -hmm. is this checklist based on how long you've known this person like things you are willing to do and not willing to do That's the thing. That's why I'm saying having a mental checklist might be a little bit easier of just a few things that you will and won't do, right? Like this falls into like, and this is like the next thing that I put on the list. If you have boundaries going into a situation, you can avoid potential hazards, right? Like, because you're not going to have like a long list of like, okay, just to let you know, I'm into this, but I'm not into this. I will Mm -hmm. do this, but only on Saturdays, you know, like you're not going to like have this list. So to me, I was wondering why are these important? And I think they're important. It's because it's going to be helpful for communication. Like if you just have like a few things that you know about yourself, right. Sexually that you will and won't do, this could actually really potentially help you in future situations. So that if somebody asked you about something, you're not just like completely caught off guard, you know? Um, Okay. And this comes from trial and error. I'm not saying everybody's going to be perfect at it. I'm just saying, hopefully through this conversation, why this is important is because this can kind of help you, you know, understand a little bit more about yourself. Like, do I have these mental checklists? Right. Because I'm sure a lot of people can attest to the fact that going into a sexual situation, 
there's a lot of questions, right? Like there's a lot of like moving parts, like, you know, like, do I take my clothes off? Do I leave them on? Like, you know, are we going to take a shower after? Are we going to take a shower before? Morgan, did you wash your hands? I mean, you already have like a mental checklist. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. That's true. So you know what I mean? So that's why I was asking, like, do you think that this could be important? Like having this kind of like mental checklist, would that maybe help, you know, alleviate some of the anxiety and tension around being sexual with another person or multiple? I guess so, but I think I need to know, I think I need to know, um, like an example, like okay. I need to know an example of a mental checklist because I'm thinking like, okay, if it's a one night stand, maybe no butt stuff. Right. Or, um, <laughs> right. no, exactly. Or, but also we know how many fetishes are out there. You know, we have follow-up episodes just because <laughs> we can get through all of them. Right. So right. you might come across something that you didn't even know was an option. So fair. Well, I fair. Guess... No, go ahead. Well, no, you are correct. So that is like really the reason why having like a few things on the table, you know, or a few things in your mind that you know are like maybe necess- like boundaries for you or fetishes for you, whatever they are. At least if you have this mental checklist, you can like initiate that conversation for understanding each other like that's where I was coming from because because again like we're talking about this because it came after the episode about you know orgies having multiple people right that's so many more literal moving parts (laughs) to worry about but how do you know what your boundaries look like right until you're tested well of course you don't but maybe through a little bit of conversation about these sexual do's and don'ts maybe it'll help you build your own mental checklist to just be more open and honest about what you're maybe open to or what you're not, right? Because say, for instance, if it is a hookup and you say, well, I'm not into butt stuff, like on the first hookup, right? Well, maybe they'll change your perception on that. They're like, well, I ran you a beautiful bubble bath and (laughs) I will leave you alone. (laughs) Okay, so you're going to make this mental checklist just so they can talk you out of it? No, just so it can open up the communication. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the thing. No, like, I, I get what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Know what you're comfortable or what you're comfortable talking about. Also right? that. Yeah. It's a hard no on, but stuff on the first date. Great. Exactly. That's just the end of the sentence. Right. Period. However, me thinking about back on my experience, like I didn't have any frame of reference for do's and don'ts. I was just going into every experience, like I, I, you know, thinking that it was probably going to be pretty standard. Right. But then homeboy puts a finger up my ass and I'm like, oh, I I didn't know that was on the table, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, But also not really knowing myself sexually back then, I was a lot more prone to just let these things happen because I was just like, I don't, I don't have any, like, I've never talked about these things, like in a real open, honest way with my partner. Right. You know? And so instead of having to, you know, have like on the job training of anal sex, you know, maybe do some research about it outside of the sexual situation. And then you'll kind of know, like, no, I've thought about this and like, that's just not going to happen tonight. Or I'm a little bit more open to these fetishes because this is something that I know I like and I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I'll give you anything off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Morgan, have hard boundaries, but don't write it off. You know, I know. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome to our episode of We're Here to Confuse You Even More. So, (laughs) yeah. Okay. What's next? I know, right? (laughs) Um, But yeah, so another reason why it might be important to have, you know, a mental checklist or just sexual do's and don'ts of understanding what your sexual do's and don'ts are. Um, is understanding your wants and needs, right? Which we've kind of touched on. Um, But then also I just wrote this, you are very vulnerable, right? In that situation. So being open with yourself is just going to make it that much easier to be open with another person. Yeah. Okay. Can we agree on that? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, "Mm, give me an example. I know, Uh, (laughs) I know, right? But how, no, yeah, (laughs) I got nothing. Go ahead. Um, but, but, well, my first question for you though, is do you think your boundaries or your mental checklist, right? Whatever word verbiage you would like to use. (laughs) Do you think that your boundaries are different for each partner and or relationship? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
would you like more information (laughs) (laughs) care to elaborate yeah Yeah. (laughs) um as we know I have been historically single oh doesn't that make me sound old maybe I want a different word for that we'll see (laughs) I'll maybe I'll take it out in post that's what we say because we edit (laughs) take this out in post yeah yeah Just say like a computer. Yeah. yeah. Historically single. Um, so it's a lot of like hookups, one night stands, you know. Um, so there was a range of comfort comfortability. 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 Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um are... why do I do this to myself? <laughs> so there was a range of that. And mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think some things were a go, some things were a no, mm-hmm. some things were a, mm, probably yeah. should have left, right? You know, yeah, probably should have oh. called my own lift. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, and exactly. That's like my whole point because I think in like in most situations you are just going to have to learn on the spot, right? You're gonna have to learn what you're comfortable with. Um, because I could you know, I could watch a porn and see some type of fetish that I thought was like really exhilarating and like turn me on, but then it applies to me and I'm like, hold up. That actually doesn't really work the, the way I thought it does. Right. Um, right. but I do just think it's, it's, it's kind of like that saying, right? Like if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Like right. that's kind of what I think of as far as like sexual do's and don'ts. It's not necessarily like, you know, as cut and dry as like, yeah, I don't like anal sex, but I do like having my nipples touched. And like, you know, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more so like the mental preparation that goes behind it, but we will get into examples of both. So. Oh, oh, good. Okay. Um, <laughs> and not just fetishes, just like trying different positions. Like not mm-hmm. everything, you know, is like particular to like daddy fetish or what, you know, those things right. it could just be like, I really want to do it where our faces are as close as possible like missionary right here want to feel your breath on my cheek Mm, yeah like (laughs) that's not my preference by the way I'm not saying (laughs) that is like a and here's what Morgan likes that's just an example it's on my mental checklist now so (laughs) (laughs) okay so the first article I want to get into now we are going to just dive into the do's and don'ts And let's talk about these, right? Which ones do we agree with? Um, Which ones have we maybe experienced ourselves? Um, And how do they apply to the bigger um, picture of actually enjoying the sexual encounter, right? So one of the articles I found was on India.com. And um, basically it was literal, just a literal list of do's and don'ts for your first time. So this is talking about our inexperienced people, right? Which again, after you experience sex a few times or a lot of few times in my situation, uh, <laughs> in our situation, um, you start to realize that like you do, you'll kind of just like gravitate towards certain people because you kind of know what this is going to be like, right? Like, mm, yeah. If you have a certain body type or even a certain sense of humor, like I can kind of tell, like if you're like a dry person and <laughs> you're a dry person, uh just a dry person (laughs) you're just a dry person if you're a dry person (laughs) my pussy's also gonna be dry exactly yeah (laughs) Uh, (laughs) seriously um so I think that this was a good place to start okay so um one of the first do's is make sure that you communicate with your partner and both of you are consenting adults okay and so they talk about a little bit just about how um you know obviously younger people that aren't consenting adult age do have access to the internet. Right. And so they talk a lot about just like making sure that the consensual age is, you know, is appropriate, um, which, you know, okay, fair. That's a given. Right. Um, but I will say that a lot of people's first time, you know, is before they're like 18. Right. And so I think that that's, to me, this one was a little bit not problematic. Obviously this is like geared towards adults, but I do think that it just kind of shows how much we don't pour into our young people. Like we don't, we don't even like give them access to like sexual, sexual education. Right. Like it starts off with saying like, make sure <laughs> you have this. For you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And- it just sounds like a cut. Let's cover our asses. Like, Oh, let's do an article about how to have your first time be over 18. 
Okay. Fair or enough. The consenting age. Or no, whatever. That's what, it, okay. that's what it sounds like. Okay. Fair enough. I'll give them that. But I was reading into it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're like, let's dissect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the first do not is do not assume the other person is willing to try or experiment with new things without asking. Well, the whole thing is a new thing. Oh, right. Because it's their first time. <laughs> They're like, so are you ready to have sex? You're like, no. I mean, well, it, I mean, if you say no, that's fine. I mean, I want to have sex. Okay, do you want to have sex? No, but you don't want to <laughs> have sex. No, yes, I do. But do you don't. I, that's confusing. I don't know if I like that one. Right, <laughs> I know. That's what this... it feels like. <laughs> well, because exactly. Our under 18s that, are, have, that have skipped number one are like, no, I need more detail. They're like, <laughs> oh, okay. So maybe I don't want to do this. Click, yeah, yeah exit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So obviously we both bypassed that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, the next do is wear protection, which of course, you know, um, depending on the situation, um, but it's never a bad situation to wear protection. So that's a good <laughs> <Yeah>. one. <laughs> um, uh, the next do not, so they just kind of go back and forth. Um, yeah. So the next do not is assume that, no, do not assume that nothing will happen because it's your first time. Anything can happen and you don't want to pay, place yourself in a position you cannot handle. What does that mean? Anything can happen. That sounds ominous. It says, do not assume that nothing will happen because it's your first time. Nothing. Oh, is that like prepare for an orgasm? Like don't expect not to have one. Right. Which. Okay. But don't put that much expectation uh, into having one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly what I'm like. I could, I could put some money on a lot of people. I'm like, it's just not going to happen for you right. this time, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. Keep there's, reading. There's got to, there's always got to be a first time. So. Right. Exactly. And there's a first time to not orgasm and probably a second. Yeah, we'll move on. A third. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, this one, I like this one. Uh, do share your special moment with someone you care about knowing that you feel comfortable with the other person will make it much more meaningful. Okay, who is this geared towards? I <laughs> I think it's people under 18. This <laughs> article is all over the place. That's exactly what I was saying because I was like, if you're going to have an article like this about do's and don'ts, I mean, things very obvious. Well, not necessarily obvious, but things like wear protection. Okay, fair, right? Like that's right. a fair, you know, across the board. However, yeah, if you're going to say it's like consenting adults, well, Consenting adults also realize that special moments are just like not <laughs> graduation was supposed to be a special moment. You know what I mean? I was mm. fucking hot and my heels were sinking into the ground. Like, yeah. what's special about that? Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um, mm, sure. Yeah. If you can, if you can make it work and find that special person, great. But everyone has a first time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So. And meaningful is so, I mean, my first time was meaningful for all the wrong reasons, uh, you know, according to this article, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, it was meaningful, but not because it was someone special, kind of the opposite. We were at a Kesha party. We were all dressed like trash bags, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we were, we all have glitter on our faces and every other part of our body. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's one for you. <laughs> um, next one, do not, do, do not have a one night stand. You don't want to wake up the next morning regretting the decision. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ah, like, uh, I mean, maybe. Mm, I mean, do what you definitely. Do. Yeah, definitely have a one night stand. If you are yeah. a consenting adult that wants to figure out your do's and don'ts of sex, you're going to have to try it out, okay? Because if you're trying to compare things that you've never tried yourself. Like that's, that's why I was saying like mental checklist is not necessarily going in. Look, I'm going to fight this to the death. Like this is the hill, <laughs> hill I'm dying on. You need a mental checklist, but no, I'm just saying like, it's not going in with like, okay, I'm not going to do all these things, but I will do these things. It's more so just knowing like, what do you actually want out of sex? Because I think a lot of times, especially in our like mainstream society, we're constantly bombarded with, you know, things about how to make your first time special, right? Like how to please your partner. And usually it's very misogynistic, right? It's all about, you know, how, yeah. How to, you know, dress, cor you know, correctly for the, for the bedroom to get things spicy, how to spice up your sex life. Right. 
But honestly, try it out for yourself. You might not like lingerie, right? You might want to just be full frontal. You know what I mean? Just out here living life. And that's yeah. okay. You know, it doesn't need to be quote unquote spicy for you to enjoy sex, right? Um, right. Or for other people to pleasure you, right? You don't, you shouldn't have to like put on this whole act. Now, if you're into it, by all fucking means, do that shit, you know? True that. But if that's not and for you. Yeah. Then do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And also, why are you still there in the morning? If it's a one night stand, you fucking leave when you're done. <laughs> what are you doing here? We should write an article. We should. Right? Ryan and Morgan's do's and don'ts. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not a one morning stand. It's a night stand. You know what I mean? Right. One gone. night stand. It's in the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Read the room, people. Um, next one. Um, do have fun, relax, and enjoy yourself. It's supposed to be a night to remember. See, they always <laughs> get, I know. They they always, always, you're taking notes on this. You're like, oh, I'm so glad they mentioned that. <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> and trust me, if you followed the other parts about, you know, it like, just think about the fact that <laughs> you could have sex and not orgasm, right? So you've gone through all of the talk. And again, like, like I've mentioned in past episodes, you know, the chase was like 90% of the fun for oh, me. Oh yeah. Right. right? Yeah, the buildup. Yeah. For the sure. Buildup. For yeah. sure. So the night quote unquote part of it, like when you actually get into bed, I mean, I, I, I have forgotten most of those. <laughs> yeah. So I know when they're like, make it special. I'm like, do, are you supposed to remember? Yeah. I know. I'm trying to think back. Uh Oh, <laughs> yeah. I should have brought whipped cream. I don't, I don't know where I'm going here. <laughs> You should should put it in my sex, sex journal is what it was. Hey, the, ooh, now that, now. Which now by the way, trademark on that TMTM because yeah. Ryan and I might make a sex journal. Right. So keep an eye out guys. We yeah. will give you prompts. Yeah. Well, maybe some little tips and tricks to try. Mm. Maybe you do want a spicy. Maybe he wants to do something spicy for you. He, she, they, whomever. Yes. Whomever. All it's for everyone. Ever. <laughs> everywhere yeah. the foursomes the threesomes the daisy rings what was that what do we daisy chains daisy chains whatever you want to do there's yes. a prompt for it yeah <laughs> there's a prompt exactly yes <laughs> we are so pro all of this <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> okay and so we have just a few more here but um do not go in with any expectations otherwise it's likely you'll end up getting disappointed Yes, but this kind of goes against like all the other things they've said already. Exactly. Make it special. Do this and that. Like, no, that's why it's so fascinating. That's why I loved this one because I was like, this was so first of all, having, you know, there are a lot of articles on sexual do's and don'ts, but I really liked that they just went back and forth like this, that, this, that. Yeah. But I also liked it because they were so contradictory. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just constantly go back on what they just said. It's really important, but also be open to it. But like, it'll matter. But also, you know, it's just like, pick a side, man. Yeah. You know, pick a lane. Like the want. inexperienced person reading this is going to leave this article more confused than when they got here. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're uh, very conflicting ideologies, you know, going here. It's like they want, it's like, I mean, literally it's like, they want you to know that sex can be fun and exhilarating and all these things, but they also are like, but don't get your hopes up because also it's supposed to be special. And like, you're not, probably not going to like, enjoy. you know, like there's just like all these <laughs> yeah. different sides of it, which again, yes, sex can be all of those things wrapped up in one. I know I've went through all of these kinds of like different feelings in one night, right. you know? Yep. Um, but at the same time, like that was part of the experience, right? Figuring that out. So still fun though. <laughs> um, love these next two. So do what feels natural. Your body will tell you what feels right and feels wrong. But then the next one, do not force anything. You and your body will regret it later. <laughs> what? <laughs> do well, it feels right. You're going to get a cramp, but it might feel good <laughs> if your leg is like, up, oh. if your knee is up next to your ear. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So true. there's compromise. There's always that, compromise. That is very true. That is very true. Like sometimes my legs were spread wider than they probably wanted to go, 
but that was a good position. You know, Mm -hmm. can I stand it for three minutes? Yeah, I can. Will I pay for it later? Sure. But will that remind (laughs) me of how good the sex was when I was in that position? Yes, it will. You know, right. See, that's the kind of reminder you want, right? There you go. Now I can't walk down the stairs because my (laughs) legs are really sore because I was spread eagle last night and, you know, about to snap my leg off at the joint, you know, (laughs) right at the joint. (laughs) Yeah. Clean break. Clean break. (laughs) You're like a Barbie doll. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, And then my, uh, the last two do find a private location privacy will <laughs> look I'm already laughing because I'm like well there goes my first time uh <laughs> oh that's true yours was super public very public uh my yeah public uh do find a private location privacy will ensure no interruptions and make you feel more comfortable also not true definitely been in a room and have been interrupted um mm, yeah. <laughs> and then last one do not do it anywhere just because you're feeling horny wrote this look so I have the the person who it is Priya Carr um which you know I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation but um again like I just don't think that just because it's your first time this is something that I think we touched on obviously like in the virginity episode but just because it's your first time does not mean everything. It, it's, it's literally kind of like means nothing like in, a sad, <laughs> in like a real way, which people who have had sex know what I mean in that way. But like, it really kind of means nothing, you know? Yeah. It's like the first time you used a computer, you know, like, do you think back and I'm like, wow, I really, I really loved that first time that I logged into my Dell computer. No. Nobody right. It's that. just like when you learn to do something, it's like the first time you ride a bike. Right. Right. Now you know how to ride a bike though. And you don't think back to the hundreds, thousands of times you rode a bike in every experience, you know? It's right. It's like, mm. no, I've upgraded to better bikes, you know? Right. That bike was shit. I learned. Yeah. The training <laughs> you know? wheels are off. Hey, there you go. The daisy chains are on. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, exactly. All about the daisy chains, not about the training wheels. Okay. And that article was all training wheels. So (laughs) that's right. Let's move on. So, (laughs) so the next one that I found, um, again, some do's and don'ts, but I liked this one a little bit more because, um, it was like sex one-on-one because let's be real. If you're looking up sexual do's and don'ts, you're probably a little bit less experienced, right? Um, or if you have a podcast where you want to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> educate the masses. Um, <laughs> but you're probably a little bit more inexperienced, um, not necessarily in having sex, but maybe in thinking about different parts of sex, right? Because I think, you know, a lot of people can probably attest to this. If you are a young person, a single person, you know, going out, having sexual encounters, maybe being inebri- inebriated sometimes when you're, you know, in these encounters, you're not, again, the chase is most of it. And when you actually end up finishing the act, you're not really like dissecting it for all of that it is. You know what I mean? You're kind of just like taking it for what it was. Maybe you, you know, you like the person enough to say bye. Maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And then you're kind of just like moving on, right? You're kind of just like going to the next. Um, And I think that having more like sexual conversations about not just sexual do's and don'ts, but like things around um, what's comfortable during sex that really has to come from either. Yeah. Like randomly looking it up on the internet, hopefully maybe talking with your close friends about it. But to be honest, it's really just trial and error out there. Like, that's why when people are like, what's your number? I'm like, get that number up, girl. Like Mm -hmm. you got to try enough. (laughs) Exactly. Not enough. And also, I mean, you might know the basics, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's always certain ways you can do things. Yeah. Little tweaks, you know? little tweaks the knee There's one tip right there yeah Ooh. right there <laughs> <laughs> seriously little you know little t- <laughs> little tweaks you know you know your knee at your shoulder versus at your head it's a very different position you know mm-hmm. you're hitting different spots is all i'm saying try it out you're hitting different yep you're, <laughs> you're hitting different. <laughs> so this one was promising because i love the name of this <clears throat> of this article or i'm sorry of this uh, website it's castle megastore Castle Megastore. I don't know what that means, um, but if you want to look it up, go to castlemegastore.com. You found a sex article? This sounds like um, 
<clears throat> maybe like a Walmart equivalent of like medieval gear or something. I thought the same thing, but no, it's a section. It's called like yours. a Renaissance fair um, swap meet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a really good. <laughs> <laughs> a really good idea I mean it does say like at the top best brands biggest selection like it sounds very Walmart-y mm. um but it says your sexual wellness headquarters like that's like how it's branded oh. yeah castle megastore which I was like if that's your name that's even cooler um <laughs> but anyway so there's some this, these are some tips on um it's called talking about sex 101 important do's and don'ts to keep in mind right so a lot more relaxed of an approach yeah. here you know i already liked the vibe of where this was going okay. so, we'll see. <clears throat> so the first one is do talk about turn-ons and turn-offs with your partner okay now my question to you morgan in this is when they say with your partner because they they do kind of allude to you know whether it's long term or whether you're only interested in for the evening so i was already like okay we're off to a better start right because we're kind of trying to cover a range of situations um but for you do you think that you know talking about turn-ons and turn-offs with your partner necessarily makes it a more satisfying experience what do you think Mm, I think it's more of like a play-by-play you know like flying Mm. by the seat of your pants like Mm. you know yeah he starts going one way and you're like I really like it this way and so he goes that way you know what I mean (laughs) yeah it's just kind of as it's happening Mm, like I like a finger there I like two there something like that you know Mm, okay but it's like in the moment it's Mm -hmm. not like we sit down before yeah you know (laughs) hey hold on let me get my planner out like no that's not happening I mean if you're me no I'm just kidding if it's yeah (laughs) that was my example not Ryan's example yeah exactly it works for her does not work for me um (laughs) yeah that's why Ben goes to look at the planner like oh what she put in there about uh that thing I did with the you know and the and to the two other things yeah oh my god she put a sticker it's a star all right all good (laughs) that's what they're doing Wednesday night yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) also too you know I was just thinking about you know if you're like telling this partner whoever this is where whether it's a hookup hookup or not you know oh I like this but I you know you know I really like this or you know there's always a chance that they don't actually know how to do that um I've (laughs) had this has happened to me in the past where like I, you know, was getting a little bit more confident in myself and I wanted to share that, you know, in my sexual experiences. And I just remember like, you know, the vast majority of guys, like, you know, especially straight guys, the ones I've hooked up with at least do not actually know how to pleasure a woman or just pleasure anyone else, you know? And I, and I don't even think this just goes for like in the straight community. I mean, it's probably more prevalent because, you know, whatever, like, straight people just don't really have an identity when it comes to like sexual experiences. It's just like, oh, I just banged a person. And it's like, okay, but what did you actually do to get to that point, right? Mm. Because penetration is only like 30% of the battle. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. But I think a teaching moment can be, can be sexy. It can be. It can be. I said can, yes. (laughs) Emphasis on the can. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, exactly. But just, you know, keep it, keep an open mind about the fact that you may just meet somebody that's like, oh, well, I don't really know how to do that. Uh, (laughs) You know, so moving on. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. um, Don't post about your sex life online. So Mm. we've we've already done that wrong. (laughs) Yikes. Uh Uh-oh. Well, uh uh-oh. (laughs) <laughs> which I was just like I mean post whatever the fuck you want um I could see that maybe being an issue I mean obviously if you're like posting you know obviously you can get in trouble for like posting like nudes or somebody else's nudes or something like that right don't post like revenge porn don't right. post without someone else's consent right like kind of basics but yeah do what you want to do and that is true. Like I've definitely seen like on porn sites, like I always wonder, like, you know, when they just like have a camera in the corner or like, you know, and they're mm. like having sex, like, did yeah. everyone know that? Like, yeah. Right. You know, they're not really turning out to the camera. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they actually knew we were there. Or maybe yeah, just is this not- low production value or yeah. um <laughs> do, do they not know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they just put amateur in the title and then everything's okay, apparently. So <laughs> Um, do talk to trusted friends about sex, which I mean, check, 
<laughs> right. Trusted friends listening in now. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. We trust all of you. Um, <laughs> uh, don't talk about sex at work. Oh. I've, I've done that. It depends. You got yeah. your work friends. And if they're really close, then they're your real friends. Right. And then you just talk about whatever you want to talk about. No, exactly. I was like, honestly, if you've ever worked a boring job, which is like most of them, <laughs> sex chats is like the thing that keeps it going. You know, like I want to hear about Rodney's, you know, situation last night. You know, I want to know what Joanne was doing last night with her yeah. really boring husband. You know, how was it? Was it boring? Yeah, it I know. Was it was boring. boring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Now you're like, when I see her in the break room, I'm like, <laughs> I heard what you did (laughs) yeah exactly don't laugh at people and don't be shameful but no but she's walking funny because she got spanked and you're into that you know you're like "Mm, yeah I know why oh yeah do a fist bump that's cool but yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) support each other right exactly (laughs) but be supportive right be supportive (sighs) um which I do like this next one um do practice difficult tasks so this just goes back to you know if you are in the business of, you know, actually wanting to have really good sex or just really enjoyable sex, um, because good is, you know, that's subjective, right? Everybody's Mm -hmm. idea of what good sex is might be different, but if you want it to be enjoy, enjoyable practice, you know, and again, it doesn't have to be on a lot of different people. It could be, and that's completely fine. But if you're comfortable, you know, with this partner, or you just want to be more comfortable in yourself and like asserting what you want, you also have to, you know, it's a give and take, right? Like you have to be able to provide good things as well. Um, So yeah. Can we expand on that a little? Say it again, practice difficult tasks. Yeah. So it says like, uh, you know, some conversations don't get easier, even if you're hundred percent comfortable talking about sex under normal circumstances, then there are those out there who are just shyer and more reserved when it comes to frank discussion about intimate topics. Oh, okay. So kind of push yourself to have those conversations. That's right. They, okay. I was like, difficult tasks. They're like, always open the pickle jar yourself. Oh. <laughs> what are we talking about? You know, that's kind of vague. Yeah. So I didn't well, really, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, I was thinking, I mean, it also does mention like, just like a lot of good things about just like sexual health, which it talks about, um, you know, like talking about birth control, STD status, or mm, a personal yeah. kink you'd really like to explore. So it covers, you know, myriad okay. topics. But all of them are good because not only is it good to just be honest about, yeah, like, are you on birth control? What kind of protection are we using? Right. What is your status? You know, like all those things are completely valid, but also too, like it mentions a personal kink you'd like to explore, like Mm -hmm. practice talking about those things, but also practice doing those things. Right. Like if you are a person that has this personal kink, or like we said, it doesn't even have to be that specific. It could just be a preference of, you know, I like the lights on, right. I like, um, to do it on top of the sheets. I like, you know, whatever it is, I like this position. It has to be a give and take, right? Like if you are asking your partner or whoever the person or persons are in the situation, you also have to be willing to practice and step outside of your comfort zone to get what you want as well. Does that make sense? Yes. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't, (laughs) don't talk to anyone and everyone about sex. Mm. (laughs) I just explained OnlyFans to my mom. So I think I'm out on this category. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I've broken every rule in the book about talking about sex. I've talked about it all. Also too, I always find it really interesting when like meeting new couples, like how long it takes to have a sexual conversation, you know? And, and this is just me being a horn dog. I'm like, okay, how long is it going to take till, you know, we talk about something. Um, but it also tells me a lot about the person because like, how comfortable are you talking about it without thinking that like somebody's coming on to you? You know what I mean? Mm, no, but because only because, <laughs> okay, wait, I have follow-up questions though, because I think you're talking about having these conversations with you and your partner to someone else and their partner. Plus you're kind of a flirt. It totally seems like you're coming on to people, Ryan. I mean, I was. Like, I'm open-minded. We're going to have an open marriage. I like everybody, you know, give me a badge, give me a pee. Like I'm down. That sounds kind of like a, like a cheer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, give me a pee. Give me a pee. Yeah. yeah. What does that make? Orgy. Yeah, orgy. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, uh, yeah, that can, 
it probably seems like a come on. Um, no, I don't. Okay. But, sure. I know. Yes. Okay. I do like to flirt and it comes off as that sometimes, but I just mean like, because there are certain topics that are taboo, like mm-hmm. sexual topics. I right. just always like to see like how long it takes for the conversation to talk about something sexual, because I just think it's silly as adults, not, you know, as like young people, of course, you're like, hee hee, like, oh, dildo, you know, you like say dumb stuff. Oh, condoms, haha. But like as adults, it's just interesting to me that like, that's considered like not everyday talking points. Like, <laughs> Every, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am just coming from a crazy horny perspective. No, but. no. But I, I don't think, not in my experience that I've seen, couples don't talk about sex as much when they are together. No. When they are apart. Right. Right. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, you and your partner might be an exception. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's the thing. We haven't even done anything yet. I'm not saying we're just like throwing it. No, out no, no. I don't mean even in that way. I just mean with the like how comfortable you are with talking about it. Oh yes. And maybe it's with me because we are so close. So he's like, oh, she knows everything anyway. Or or maybe I don't know. Right. But right. No, I could that is see how those conversations might not be as comfortable because what if you say something that's going to upset your partner? What if you reveal something that your partner doesn't want someone else to know? Mm-hmm you know? Mm, Yeah. So that's probably why it doesn't happen as much. That is true. And, and that's the thing. I mean, no, you're completely right about that. When we meet other couples, you know, there's, there's just this, there's this like bear, there, this boundary up, right? Like there's this boundary to begin with because yeah, you are a couple obviously, but at the same time, we're still all like, you know, humans right like we're all still having feelings about things and I'm not even saying talking about sex as in like you know talking about like the intimacy of it all but just talking about things that really do occur to you right like like for example I remember we were talking with a couple and they were mentioning mentioning that their family was coming into town and um and we were talking about like oh yeah when our family stayed and like oh yeah there was like no privacy you know we had somebody Mm -hmm. in every room you know um and I just like mentioned I was like yeah which is really interesting because you don't notice how big of a luxury it is to have sex like anywhere anytime when you live alone versus when people come to visit like Mm -hmm. like you realize like oh shit we have to be like cognizant of like if we're loud or whatever (laughs) you know and this particular couple, the conversation just got really dry and like, it just like kind of stopped for a second and we just kind of had to pivot. But I was just like, that's a normal part of conversation. Yeah. That's not that, that's not a big reveal. Like, right. Right. (laughs) No, exactly. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, trust me, I know I could be ridiculous about some things, but to me in that situation, like, I was just like, okay, but we all think about it. Like we don't have to be weird about it. So I get what they're saying. Don't talk to anyone and everyone about sex, but I do. So, you know, there's that. We do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Do consider sex therapy. I mean, we love therapy. So any kind of therapy, we love therapy, we love sex, sex therapy. Yes. (laughs) Works. Yeah. (laughs) And that's what it says. Do you find it difficult to impossible to discuss it even with your partner or a really good friend? you may want to consider talking about things with a sex therapist instead, right? There's absolutely no shame in seeking help with issues that you feel are holding you back, especially in a safe professional environment. So all the things we mentioned, again, I think that taboo topics, always going to somebody that you feel like maybe has a little bit more information on the subject, you know, and they've talked with so many different people about it as well, right? So who better to talk about? So yeah, totally down with that. Or just watch Sex Education on Netflix. Such a good show. Such a good show. And lastly, don't hesitate to get your partners okay. So this kind of goes back to um, like consent, but also it says, if you're ever in doubt as to whether or not sex should be on or off the table outside of your relationship, it's never a bad idea to ask your partner how they feel. Some people are a lot more comfortable with such things than others, and your partner will likely appreciate your consideration consideration either way try it and see it for yourself mm, I feel like that can be tricky though <laughs> yeah because because <laughs> if you bring it up it's because if you there. bring it up and they're <laughs> not down oh that might stir something up that might open a can of worms 
Right. But I think you'll probably get a read on your partner on whether or not that's a conversation you can have, you know, (laughs) you'll probably know. Fair enough. I mean, exactly. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like whatever type of partner this is, this kind of goes back to the same thing about like asking for what you want. If they don't actually have that to give you, I mean, I guess you got your answer, right? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's true. Which brings me in to our third topic, um, which is seven things you should never do before and after sex. Okay. Before we get into these, because I do like these, um, but before we get into these, do you have any, you know, before and after, not necessarily do's and don'ts, but do you have any like preferences about what should happen before? And let's just, let's put out a scenario. Okay. So I'm going to put out a scenario for for you. So you are out a night on the town with some friends, with some gal pals. Okay. Um, (laughs) and it's after a really fun show. Maybe you went to a comedy show or something, right? So you weren't like getting crazy sweaty and this will matter later. Um, (laughs) so you weren't getting crazy sweaty. You still look very cute, makeup intact, hair done, you know, got heels on, whatever. And you guys just decide to stop off, you know, for like a little nightcap, you know, somewhere close by. Um, and you meet, you know, a group of, you know, other people, maybe some single, some not, maybe some in the mood for an orgy and you meet, you start talking, right. And you see that this could actually go somewhere. You weren't expecting it, right. You weren't going out to like have a wild night. It just kind of happened. Okay. So say this person has a hotel room, you go back to the hotel. So think about what are some of the things that you would like to happen before the sexual encounter, or you would prefer to happen before the sexual encounter. Um, what kind of like things do you think should, you know, should happen if you had your way, you know, ideal world things that should happen yeah are we talking about like prep I was thinking more prep did I groom exactly exactly in my I'm not that old older age (laughs) um (laughs) I don't really care about that as much there you go you know what I mean I'm not gonna stop a hookup if I'm like oh I haven't shaved in a while like "Mm, whatever I'm a grown-up I have hair down there right it is what it is you know yeah Yeah. but I will say one for me is definitely being able to like use the bathroom before um like a number one or a number two oh well Jesus I mean I was (laughs) I should definitely go pee after yes that is one that's That's true but no I was thinking literally like being able to go to the bathroom like freshen up you know see what (laughs) what, you know get a scope of the body I wasn't meaning to actually like take a shit I mean sure take a shit (laughs) sorry I mean, like, if right you're going before, in for that some kind of makes you feel yeah. not as sexy, you know. I, I don't mean, know if I want to go drop one like right before I go <laughs> fuck a stranger. Yeah, go blow his bathroom up. <laughs> Come out ready to fuck. Yeah, that's real sexy. You're like, oh, you got any matches? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, first of all, you know that that's happened, and the reality is, is yeah. like, look, if you got to take care of business, you got to take care of business. I mean, you're gonna get into it. That, that's what's so funny, right? Is because we have like these social norms where it's like it's normal for you know our body parts to touch and bump and do all these things when we're having sex but talk about like going shit and it's like well uh, yeah I killed the mood killed the mood right killed mood, the mood of the conversation <laughs> like, it's a sexy night like yeah you're meeting someone and I was like number one or number two <laughs> God, sorry <neither. laughs> I mean yeah do what you gotta do but I was just thinking I I've been in both situations where it's like, oh, the rush of it. Like we get into the room. We just like want to get into it. Right. But I've also been in the situation where it's like, we know it's going to happen, but we're still building up to it. But if I have time to just slip away to the bathroom, you know, just kind of get a mental picture of everything that's going on. So I'm prepared to go into the situation, you know, it's like preparing for battle, you know, I'm like, do I have everything together together? And then when I go out there, you know, I just, I, I think, like I said, the buildup is so much of the fun. Right. Yeah. And so like, just being able to kind of give yourself like that moment, you know, you know, you're about to go out there and conquer, you know, like you're about to do it. Yeah. You just kind of give yourself that moment, you know, just kind of a breath of like, ha, ah, you got this, you know, cause it can be That's intimidating. Yeah. 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 I did hear a story and I don't know where I read this or I don't know, but this girl was like, Oh, one of my guy friends told me that he was hooking up with a girl and they he like stopped the hookup and left because she had like white stuff down there 
and he was like, it was so weird. There was like white stuff in her like pubes. And the girl is like, oh, she went to the bathroom and tried to like freshen mm. up. Yeah. And it was like some soggy toilet paper situation. Yeah. So just be cognizant. I mean, you're beautiful the way you are, you know? I know. Right. Exactly. And yeah, she probably just rubbed you hard and like (laughs) left like remnants, you know, but also too, have you ever been in a hookup where you took a shower before? Mm, Like right before? Like you I have shower right before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that too. And it is nice. Right. Because it's oh, like, yeah. let's yeah. be real. That's right. Like We're coming full, from outside. Like prep experience. That's yeah. where you, yeah. That's oh, true. Yeah. That's really where you get to know exactly how you uh, want to prep for sex. Mm-hmm. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and if you can even share that moment, you know, it's like, oh, let's take a shower together. Let's rinse off together. And then we get in bed, you know, that's a nice, nice little situation, you know, sets the mood. So, and then after, like Morgan said, definitely pee after, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've already had your sexy moment. So you can go like actually take care of your body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the ones that I found, um, this was on marieclaire.com <laughs> and this article was pretty funny. Um, it was written by some guy, um, and he just like, uh, titles it like, or subtitles it a real guy explains what he wants and doesn't want you to do in bed. Right. So I thought it was at first I was just like, oh gosh, like, what is a guy going to tell me that like, you know, like he doesn't want or does want, but I actually do like some of them. Um, because I think these are a lot more practical (laughs) of like things that you kind of hear. And it was just kind of funny. So the first thing he said was, do you have a sense of humor? Oh yeah. Right. That's actually a really good tip. That's a really good tip to have. Um, I cannot tell you how many times, I mean, I literally can't tell you if you watch body count episode, I cannot tell you how many times it happened, but I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've met somebody that just takes themselves way too seriously in the bedroom. Like this isn't a book report. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, have some fun, (laughs) enjoy it, you know? And like, if I trip over your leg, trying to move positions, that's, that's funny. Like we're both in this together. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Um, don't tell me to make you feel a certain way. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What do you think? I kind of agree with that. Um, don't tell me to make you feel a certain way. Okay. Yeah. So this is the thing you're already in your head about like so many things. So I kind of understand when, (laughs) because I mean, the way he explains it is like, when a girl is like, make me feel this way now during pillow talk, I'm just like, wow, I don't think I can do that, which <laughs> <laughs> I do understand. I, I understand that sentiment because it's like, again, that's what I was kind of alluding to. Like, you might not be able to actually pleasure this person in the way that they want. Yeah. So just kind of going in with no expectations as far as like what they will or won't do is probably the best recipe to enjoy the situation. So I kind of get where he's coming from on that. Yeah. Um, do make it obvious when I'm doing something good but don't do anything too long. How do you feel about that? Don't do anything too long. This goes together? No, these are two different ones, but I I thought they, yeah. Okay, so (laughs) say the first one. Yeah, do make it obvious when I'm doing something good. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Words of affirmation. Everyone needs (laughs) needs a gold star. Everyone needs, you know, everyone likes an A plus. Like, yeah, for sure. Right. And 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 you know what? Even if he isn't a long-term partner or they aren't a long-term partner, mm-hmm. let them know what's working because they can then add it to their re- repertoire. Right, right, exactly. They can put it on their mental checklist right. and bring there it in to the next partner. You're really doing a service to humanity. <laughs> <laughs> so just exactly. moan and groan and do all the things. Right, and that's why I think this one kind of uh, offsets the last one, which was you know about like, don't tell me what you want. Just tell me what I'm doing good. Right. Like instead of like having like all these very specific things. And again, if you're into kinks and all those things and you like preferences, that's totally fine. Be upfront. But I do like the idea of make it obvious when I'm doing something good versus like, Oh, make me feel like that. It's like, well, I I don't know how to achieve that for you, but if you really like this feeling, I could keep doing that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So focusing on the positive more so. Right. Um, don't be fair. Oh, I'm sorry. Do be fair with lazy positions. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we've kind of talked about this. Um, I think that 
you know, missionary is woefully underrated. Um, because I'm just like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like there's a reason why it's, it's standard because the standard it's, it's, it's the old trusty, you know, tried and true, tried and true, you know, it gets the job done sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You don't have to be like upside down every time, you know? Right. Right. Exactly. You might be going for a different feeling. You might be going for a different, I don't know what. I mean, exactly. And there's a lot of variations that you can add into there. Um, But I do agree, especially if it's like a hookup or something, you know, or honestly, just in in, in general, I think sometimes, again, just those expectations, right? Like we're going to be flipping around and like, do me here and do me there. It's like, okay, you can, but just realize like, I hope you've been doing your squats because it's a lot of work. (laughs) Yeah. Reverse reverse cowgirl. It's a lot, you know, cowgirl. Endurance. Yeah. (laughs) Endurance. Exactly um and just one i i thought was interesting don't get too kinky too fast get kinky be yourself right i mean don't like spring it on someone right like (laughs) that's we kind of talked about that that in the beginning like be honest and open but if it's like a first time hookup a one night stand someone you just met or something and you're just like you open up like a duffel bag full of like dildos and vibrators and like chains and whips that might be a lot for someone who doesn't know you like that exactly has never tried something like that or right. whatever like mm, that might be a lot so it, I get the sentiment yes like yeah ease them into it see their comfortability level right and that's why it's always just about the give and take if you try something yeah like if you're you know just say something as simple as like spanking right if you're trying spanking and the person seems into it right and they're again right telling you what you're doing good oh I really like that keep doing that okay well maybe this person is into a little bit more right maybe you can take out uh you know a toy or something like that but I do agree make sure that it's all in good time right don't just like handcuff somebody to the bed and be like ready you know (laughs) yeah that would be like a did I just get kidnapped yeah (laughs) situation that that would be scary don't do that yeah yeah just because it's your kink doesn't mean it's theirs so (laughs) they might not want to be the focal point of your kink yeah. Um, <laughs> and then this one kind of leads into um, the last part of this topic, which um, he mentioned, don't give me any idea how great your ex was in bed. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the opposite of the words of affirmation, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's not, that's not great. No. That's doing yourself a disservice mm. because now he's, he's, you know, they, whomever else mm-hmm. is in the bed might be checking out. They might be like, mm, Okay. Right. So we're playing like a comparison game here. You're exactly. Thinking of someone else. Right. Right. You right, know. Right. So. And this could be like a form of like negging, right? You know, mm-hmm. like he even mentions, you know, uh, you know, your ex was an animal in bed. You know, d- again, just all those things are just a recipe for honestly disaster, and not just in the bed, but it's it's just playing mind games and mind manipulation. And your mind already has so much going on trying to focus on the sex, you know, or right. whatever you're engaging in so but if you want to do that then find someone with a kink for uh being cuckolded yeah and then there you go match made in heaven you're welcome that's very true exactly (laughs) right yeah exactly if you're into it I've definitely you know I've I've I think I feel like I've seen that somewhere maybe like in a movie or something but people are into it you'd be surprised you know what I mean I think you'd be surprised at how many different types of kinks there are which we've talked about a little bit but totally dive in right enjoy that <laughs> right with someone that enjoys find, it right with someone else who enjoys it as well yeah. and they're out there right exactly and so just a few uh tips that I liked um just as far as because this last one that he left on on this article I liked it for one reason because it kind of um made my um line of thinking go into like the oh right like there's do's and don'ts of like toxic sex habits right like sex mm-hmm. habits that only become a thing because maybe you haven't really like openly communicated what you actually do want. Maybe you're not really in touch with what you actually do want. And it just kind of made me think a little bit about what I've experienced or like what I've heard um, other people's experiences. And so one of those toxic sex habits um, was fighting just before sex. Um, Mm -hmm. And so he kind of alludes to it at the end of his article, but I kind of thought about it for myself. I was like, I've heard of this a lot. I don't know if you yeah. have. Okay. You know, yeah. where like basically people use like the fighting tension as an excuse to like rip each other's clothes off. It's very 
very played up in like theatrics and like movies and stuff like that. Um, but I just could never see really good or like healthy <laughs> relationship. It's, yeah. Long term, it's really not going to serve you. Like it's mm-hmm. not, it's not healthy. Mm-hmm. Like you're picking fights with someone for no reason, you know? Right. To get um, like a rise out of them, which is like, do you feel like they're un- emotionally unavailable in other ways? So this is like the only way that you get them like aroused. Right. Now you're associating like anger with mm-hmm. sex. Yeah. Right. Yeah. However, this might be different than like hate fucking someone, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you meet someone and you might not be totally into them, but you're kind of like, you're kind of like, you're a conquest, you know, like. Oh, 100% I fall into this category. It's very I, yeah. attractive to like, if I feel like challenge, like I feel like someone's witty and like a mental challenge, mm-hmm. that's just lay me out. I'm ready to go because <laughs> I, I, I'm not proud of it, but I know this about myself, you know? Yeah. So. Mm, oh, I've I been there. This. Yeah. yeah. I've been there for sure. Um, and again, that was never a person that I ended up being with. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes it better or worse. I'm just saying I've done it. Okay. I've, I've landed there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, also just mentioning using a fight as tension to spice up the bedroom. Um, so using, uh, you know, kind of alluding to his article, but using some argument, not necessarily that just happened, but using something that, you know, um, maybe we'll press this per- person's buttons to quote unquote, spice up the bedroom. Right. Um, and so again, this could totally fall into something like cuckolding, you know, like, oh, you couldn't fuck me. Like, you know, you did 10 years ago or so, you know, it could be a thing. Um, but it could just more allude to like, you know, having toxic sex habits that actually end up like, you know, preying on a person's self-esteem um, and their insecurities <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> rather than actually trying to quote unquote spice up the bedroom, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. But we did also learn about homegirl that spiced up her uh, vagina with uh, hot Cheeto dust. So Ooh. that's not spicy either. That's not the spice you want in the bedroom either. So that's mm-hmm. a don't. <laughs> that's a big don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's a definite don't. <laughs> Um, okay. And so just to wrap things up, we just have a, fu- a few funny, um, tips to share about things you should never do, uh, before and after sex. Okay. And so, um, I found this article, um, <clears throat> sorry, I found this article on sharecare.com and obviously we'll have all the links, um, below if you are interested in any of these. <laughs> so feel free to pull from this list if you would like to. <laughs> okay, so just to get into the seven things you should never do before and after sex. Um, so the first one, which I just alluded to is don't eat super spicy foods or a meal high in fat before engaging in sexual intercourse. Hmm. Spicy foods I get, but why not high in fat? What does that do? So it says, yeah, yeah, the spicy foods like curry and peppers trigger symptoms of acid reflux, including heartburn, a burning sensation, sensation in the throat. Um, And this may take, this may make it difficult to get into the mood, which I thought, and maybe this was just something in my head, but I thought that like some spicy foods and like herbs were like aphrodisiacs, but I guess that's just a certain type of food. I don't know why I thought like I had heard like spicy foods were like not necessarily good for sex, but like, I don't know, maybe I just, I mean, I like spicy food, right? (laughs) So if I had it, I'd probably still be in the mood. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm in, I'm into it. Although (laughs) better than a breakfast burrito. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah. I, (laughs) I had sushi the other night and then we went out and I was like burping and it was so like sushi of a burp. (laughs) Our friend Jose was like, oh, you need to turn away from me. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was a lot. So it could be anything, but right. I mean, heartburn, acid reflex, that's not going to feel good. That's not going to put you in the mood. So no, I get exactly. that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which you would need to go to the bathroom before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then it also, it also says that's not all rich, heavy foods that are high in fat, like um, think fried chicken, citrus fruits carbonated drinks and caffeinated beverages can also give you heartburn since they're harder for your body to digest. Um, so go easy on your tummy just to, you know, have everything flowing in a good way. (laughs) And the foods they mention are just like kids foods. It's like foods like bananas, oatmeal, apples, and graham crackers are less likely. So I'm like, okay, so just have like a lunchable before. (laughs) Right. That's not sexy. That's not sexy dinner date food. Yeah, exactly. Like I want to go have some sexy Indian food, but 
apparently it's not sexy. Uh, <laughs> it's very good. not, yeah. <laughs> um, number two, don't take an antihistamine. What? Yeah. Oh, because you might fall asleep. So it says, feeling stuffy? You may want to hold off on taking cough and cold meds if you're planning to get busy. While it'll help with your, your symptoms, that's not the only thing that's going to dry up. It literally says that. Women may notice that their vaginas are less lubricated since these drugs cause mucous membranes to dry up all over the body. So it affects everywhere. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. They I also didn't know that it was a mucus. I did know it was a mucus <laughs> membrane, but I didn't think about the antihistamine affecting that. Yeah. Um, wow. That's... So you just like are going to be sneezing the whole time you're having sex. Yeah. I mean, but. That's better you're going to be really me. congested. You're going to be breathing out of your mouth, not because you're like panting, but because you can't <laughs> breathe out of your nose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, get a, just get a nasal spray, you know? They even mentioned <laughs> sandpaper, sandpaper sex. Sandpaper sex isn't very pleasant. In fact, it may cause burning, itching, or pain. So sandpaper sex is apparently, that's what it's called when like you have like no natural lubricant, which I'm like, if you're going to call me a dried up old hag, just call me a dried up old hag. You know, I know. what I mean? They were like sandpaper sex sounds better. Yeah. We'll use that as the official term. Yeah. That'll that'll okay. be nicer. Yeah. For my de- yeah, Sahara Desert of a vagina. Okay, thank you. Right, exactly. Now tell me if you've done this one wrong. <laughs> Don't drink too much. Well, mm. there goes most of my years. Uh what's the reason? <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. Honestly, I mean, because that's what it, it starts off, you know, a beer or two may put you in the mood. Um, however, men should be careful, careful about overdoing booze before sex. It's a known risk factor for ED or erectile dysfunction. Mm, um, yeah. And so that's pretty much the biggest thing, but also to just, um, it also says like other things as far as like, it could curb your, um, it could actually curb your sex drive. Um, like, mm. you know, if you, um, had too much you know so there could be like other factors also it was just basically saying like you know it could lead to like serious like life issues (laughs) I mean yeah long-term problems totally get it um (laughs) yeah um moving on don't shave right before Mm. yeah so it says is shaving your preferred way of grooming your lady parts which I'm just like okay of course it's only women shaving here but okay um well not me I've been that's interesting more guys that I've been with have been sh- better shaped than I was. <laughs> you have a type. <laughs> I have a type. Exactly. So There's no problem, but you should plan ahead. Mostly because, you know, the skin around your genital area is very fragile. You don't want to go into it like being too, you know, sensitive in that area because obviously you're going to have a lot of activity down there. So that was the mm-hmm. biggest thing, which totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah um similar to like isn't it like you shouldn't shave your legs like right before getting into like the pool or something like that right because it could like like your legs are like sensitive yeah it can burn right yeah I need to shave before my pedicure tomorrow sometimes I'll take a shower right before I go and then they like start putting the stuff on your legs and you're like it burns you know (laughs) oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'll shower tonight (laughs) yeah and just like Morgan said the next one is don't skip peeing if you're prone to UTIs so I would just say in general. In general, yeah. yeah. You might not know you're prone to UTIs until you stop peeing after sex. So don't <laughs> test that out. Right. Just go ahead yeah. and have a pee. Just right. go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The mood is over. You've gotten through it. You know, you can go handle your business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, next one, don't forget to wash your sex toys. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Very, very important. Um, and not even just because like, I mean, yes, obviously like Jeremy, but also too, like, you just want to make sure that, you know, if you do have like multiple partners and stuff like that, I've always thought about that, like multiple partners and like having the same sex toys, like, Mm, you know, I I don't like to share. So that just doesn't (laughs) sound like something I would be doing. Um. (laughs) Fair, fair enough. But especially if it's going in someone else's hole and then into one of my holes, that doesn't feel like, I don't know, do more research on that. Well, yeah, exactly. And I just think, (laughs) right. Yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Um, but I also just think too, like, just for like the mental, nobody wants to actually, like, we all know that we're not your first. I mean, unless we are your first, I guess, but like, we don't actually want to have to see proof of it. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. even if it's not just like the actual dildo is dirty or something, but if it's just like not back in the box or like, you know, like, or it's just like, oh, that's actually over there. Like, oh, so you, you know, somebody's 
been at that recently. Got it. Okay. <laughs> you know. Oh, you're saying like a shared tool between different partners? Yeah. Oh, I wasn't thinking of it like that. I mean, both ways, I guess. Yeah. E- either way, honestly. But I mean, that's really true. But I feel like that's a bold move to be like, this is my one night stand dildo. And this is my like personal dildo. <laughs> well, yeah, but either way, you want it to feel as though this is the not the first time you're taking out that toy, but you still want the like, you know, the idea. Brian wants the this fantasy. dildo experience to be more like more special than someone's first time. She's like, it's not fucking special. I did this dildo's out. You're like, you use that with someone else. I thought it was me. That was just me. Look, I just want the, I just want the fantasy. Okay. I just want all the fantasy. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But definitely wash it regardless if it's a solo oh, yeah. toy, uh, a multiplayer toy, whatever you're doing with it. Definitely make sure it's clean. Agreed. Agreed. And last but not least, I love this one. Don't skip the foreplay. Ah. Uh. From the rooftops. Again, for the people in the back. (laughs) Right? I was like, this should have been number one, but I do like saving this for the end because it's like, if you're reading this article, this is the part you need to remember the the most vividly. Do not skip the foreplay, okay? Repeat. It should be at the top for the people who are just like headline readers. (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. Well, you know what? If you have any questions about foreplay, type in foreplay and many, many people will tell you, do not skip it. You are being silly if you think that the main prize is your penis. I'm talking to you, men. It's not, it's not the prize, okay? (laughs) It's the, it's the bonus, but it's, it's not the prize, okay? Um, (laughs) Right. You want the compliments on your penis. There's a lot more buildup that you need to do before that goes in. Exactly. And then you, you might get all the praise in the world. Gold stars for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like it could happen. It It could could. happen. You got to put the work in. But you got to put the work in. You got to do difficult things. Right. (laughs) You can't skip foreplay. (laughs) And that is one of them. Exactly. (laughs) So Morgan, have we done these things wrong? Hmm. Some, I mean, I feel like we've gone over so many things. I don't know. Yeah, some for sure. I mean, for me, most of them. I've done most of these things wrong, mostly because again, like it's all trial and error, but I think getting it wrong really led me to like understand like my body, understand like not only what I was into, but like, because there's like things that feel good that I actually just don't necessarily enjoy. Like, I don't really love fingering that much. Um, I've, I've come around to it a lot more because I just think mm-hmm. I was just getting like finger blasted for a long time. <laughs> um, but though, you know what I mean? So it was like, I just kind of had to like feel out the situation, but it is a confidence thing. And so if you're feeling, you know, not even necessarily just insecure, but if you're feeling like self-conscious about you know, your sexual encounters, just know that it's like, it's a personal journey for everyone. You know, um, every time, you know, you become vulnerable like that for a person, um, and not even everyone considers it being that vulnerable actually, you know, cause it's just like, whatever it's the body, like it, that's it. But if yeah. you do feel that way, you know, if you feel like you're being vulnerable, I would say maybe take some more time to just do a little bit more like self-reflection, you know, um, get to know yourself, you know, get yourself a toy, you know, a one player toy. You know, a one player toy. Yeah. <laughs> and get yourself a sex journal. Ooh. It's really not a bad idea. Trademark. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm fucking serious, man. <laughs> I, know. I know. No, seriously, that's a great idea. And we'll give you all the tips on how we've done it, you know? And again, it's because, of course, you know, have we done it wrong? Well, yes, according to, <laughs> according I mean, to first timers yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> right. First timers did it wrong. That list was so contradictory. I'm like, what are we doing here? Exactly. But these are the mixed messages that we get all the time, right? It's like, be freaky, but like also like maintain like mysterious. It's just like freaky people aren't mysterious. They're freaky. That's how you know they're freaky. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a badge of honor. Like, right. You know. Exactly. This isn't a burlesque show, you know, but again, if you're into burlesque, that's awesome. You know, that's a thing for you. Um, so yeah, definitely done it wrong. But I also think that in this realm, you know, this isn't like a career path, but in yeah. the, I mean, it could be, but in this realm for me, I feel like I, I'm glad that I did it wrong sometimes, not all the time, 
but I'm glad that I did it wrong sometimes because you don't want to be pretentious in the bedroom. Like, oh yeah, I'm just doing everything right. Like, no, have some humility oh, yeah. about yourself, you know, have fun. Right. Don't be that kind of person. Cause you're not going to be the sense of humor person. And that's really when mm-hmm. sex is fun. Yeah. You don't have to orgasm every time. Sex can be just as enjoyable. It's like a personal like e- experience. It's not mm-hmm. always, you know, intimate and emotional and special, like we said. But it right. can be fun. Yeah. It, and can, it can be, be really rough. fun. Yeah. It can be rough. It can be a lot of things. Good. Rough. It can be a lot of things. <laughs> you just got to try. Yeah. Right. You just exactly. got to try. And you can have a mental checklist, but if you're open to trying something, then give it a whirl because yeah. you never know you might write mm-hmm. something off and then turns out you meet someone who's really good at it yeah maybe Ryan you know uh, I was gonna say you meet someone like who's really good at fingering and then you're just really into fingering but you're married now so I don't know if you're gonna meet someone who's really good at. Fingering. I mean I'm more into it now yeah I met someone that's so you met someone good okay there you go <laughs> yeah. look at that Yeah. But again, but it wasn't because the first time he did it, I was like, oh my God, you're great at it. It was because I felt more confident in telling him like, I don't really love this. And again, see, I've done it wrong. Like I've said that I didn't love it, but, but I felt comfortable enough telling him that because I was like, I can tell you want to please me, you know, like I can tell you want to do things good. And so then we had like really open dialogue and, and this might just be like more of like a long-term relationship thing. But also too, if you're interested in sex and you really do like, like the ins and outs of it, you can ask questions during sex. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like a, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't the LSATs, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. It's not like a one time and you got to come back in six months. Like you can talk about this. You can have, you know, that dialogue. Right. And I think that that's so important too. And I'm sure we'll get into that on other episodes as well. But when you get to a place where you're comfortable with even either a person or just in your own self where you can like kind of have a little bit of dialogue about it it really helps to like lighten the mood and get what you want out of it you know what I mean so so get what you want get, <laughs> so <laughs> all in all moral of the story get what you want <laughs> consensually um, <laughs> <laughs> but anywho what a wild ride and conversation that we've had on this episode <laughs> I know so fun yeah so many do's and don'ts so many things to think about like, I mean I was thinking like we brought this episode up because we had a conversation with Eli and we said no teeth during blowjobs mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so I mean but that's just one facet of it right right it's well, just Exactly. Because that's the thing. Like we even said that like teeth might be, some people might be into that. Somebody's into it somewhere. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying like, somebody's. <laughs> we're not going to get into that. <laughs> I don't know. We, yeah, <laughs> I don't exactly. Let us I don't know. Know. You guys let us know if you want us to get into that and we will figure out a way to do that. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Those are the details you want to hear about. Shoot us a DM. Let us know. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know more about teeth on the peen, please send us a DM and we will dive deep. (laughs) We'll just take a bite right out of that. (laughs) Oh my gosh. But (laughs) this has been a wonderful conversation. Please make sure to follow us on Instagram at wrong the podcast. We're also on Twitter. And don't forget to rate, subscribe, and review anywhere you get your podcast. You guys can always check us out on YouTube for the visual conversation. This has been a very fun February. We are doing episodes on sex and relationships. So we have more coming up, of course. So check out next week's episode. We will see you guys then. Bye. Bye. (laughs)